Oh my God, are you okay? I thought you just pulled your hamstring a week ago. That's heavy. Yeah, it's doing great. I'm gonna share with you guys my pulled hamstring rehab. What's up everybody? Dr. Craig Lindell here from the Prehab Guys. I got Mike as my sidekick for the video. We're gonna be talking about pulled hamstring. So less than two weeks ago, I pulled my hamstring while warming up for sprints. And let me tell you, pulled hamstrings absolutely sucks. If you dealt with a pulled hamstring, give this video a thumbs up, comment, tell us what's going on with you so that we can try to help you out. In the meantime, during this video, I'm gonna walk you through the entire process from the minute that I pulled my hamstring until today. And as you can see, I'm already lifting weights again. I can tolerate running, I can tolerate jumping. The only thing that I'm working back towards is sprinting, but we'll save that for another video. So how do hamstring strains happen? The issue is, is that typically they happen, if we're talking about sprinting, so yeah, Mike, show like, boom, you're going to a sprint. So at one point when the hamstring is maximally lengthened, so let's talk about what the hamstring does first. It extends the hip and flexes the knee. So the opposite is gonna be hip flexion and knee extension. When you're sprinting and you're at this point, the muscle's changing from an eccentric contraction to boom, a concentric contraction. And that change at that max length is where muscle fibers will tear, things will strain, and that's the most common issue. Why do hamstring strains happen? Well, a few things. It could just be overuse. It could be poor preparation. And then it's also like things just happen. We don't always know. But in rehab, soft tissue strains, anything muscle related like a hamstring, we gotta do a lot of microdosing. The worst thing that you can do is just stand still and not do anything. You have to exercise. You gotta work the tissue. You gotta do microdosing. And in this video, we're gonna show you all those microdosing things that I've been doing. So let's start with what not to do. Mike, show us some of the things that we see people think that they should do all the time, or like even some of these ridiculous like hamstring stretches. You don't wanna overstretch a tissue that's already been overstretched and torn. So instead of just these passive hamstring strains or like it feels stiff, like my left hamstring feels stiffer. But what we wanna do is we wanna work the opposite muscles, like your quads, to get the hamstring to relax because it will feel tight. It'll feel like it needs to relax. So Mike, let's just show some, some leg swing stuff, right? So we're going to stretch the hamstring by activating our hip flexor and our quad. That getting these muscles to activate is gonna tell the hamstring muscle to relax. So leg swings forward and backward, sideways, they can feel really good, just gentle range of motion stuff to get it to relax. One of my favorites that I'm doing like twice a day is hamstring extenders. Mike, let's have you demo hamstring extenders. So on the ground, what you wanna do is, you wanna find something that's comfortable. Getting this leg straight is gonna make it harder, starting with it bent is gonna be making it easier. Now Mike, what I want you to do is you're gonna point your toes towards the ceiling. You're gonna kick your knee straight and let's hit that gas pedal point down. Awesome, now let's bend the knee and point it up and then we're just reversing it. Say that this feels really tight, it feels too intense. I'd be like, Mike, just bring your knee down a little bit. It doesn't have to be so close to your chest. If it's going well, you can bring that knee closer to your chest and then you can really ramp it up. But Mike is activating his quad to get his hamstring to relax, but also at the same time, we're moving through that hamstring length. So getting a muscle to relax and stretch by working the opposite is much better than just a passive stretch where you're just flailing your leg up, you're just yanking on it and it's not gonna feel good. All right, now that we're in this position, let's just start with some of your basic hamstring exercises. So Mike, let's keep you down there actually. <laughs> so the first thing that I was doing was literally just isometrics. When things hurt, the, one of the best things that you can do is an isometric. We still don't fully understand why, but it creates this analgesic effect, meaning it's gonna help with pain. So we can do knee flexion based ones, right? We talked about the hamstring, hip extension, knee flexion. So what Mike is doing right now is he's digging his heels into the ground. He's having a, a te temper tantrum. You just can't see it happening. Digging those heels into the ground. So that's a knee flexion focused. 
He can also do it where it's a little bit of hip extension focus even more if you, know, you can do that where you're there bridging or what if you straightened out your legs all the way and then you dig them into the ground trying to lift your butt up off the ground, perfect. So these are just leg digs. This is a way to get that muscle activated without having to maybe feel too much pain or discomfort. Now we can even go a little bit more. What if you bend those knees and now let's just do an isometric bridge. Perfect, so lift up all the way, boom, just holding this position. We're gonna be getting help from the glutes. We're also gonna be working the hamstrings, especially if I cue Mike, like dig those heels into the ground, lift those toes up, try to dig your heels back towards your butt, awesome. How do we make this harder? We're talking micro progressions. That is the nature of rehab. And it's knowing what to do with one exercise, a tiny little thing to make it harder. Let's bridge up. Perfect, now pick up one foot. Boom, hold for a second, switch. Hold for a second, switch. Awesome, so now we're working the hamstring isometrically at the same length. How do we continue down this road where we're still working the muscle isometrically, but now let's change the length? Let's do these walkouts, perfect. Mike's reading my mind. Walk out to what you feel comfortable with, now I'll walk back in. So you see how Mike is pausing, but the hamstring length is changing. As Mike's feet get further away from him, the hamstring, the tissue itself is lengthening, but we're pausing because we're working these muscles. Are your hamstrings on fire yet or what? <laughs> Perfect, okay, now let's have you stand up. That was awesome, Mike. So those are just different ways to isometrically work the tissue. I did that stuff every single day. Like I said, the worst thing that you can do is not do anything, but it's a matter of doing just a little bit, right? We're talking about the minimal effective dose where we're stimulating the tissue, but we're not doing too much. Now, what I'm having issues with or what I was having issues with is this max hip hinge, okay? So how did I just start working on that? Okay. I slide my hands down to what I feel comfortable with. Then I push the ground away, tighten my butt, and then push forward. And then I just work on that. As I do that, that's gonna help loosen it up. Now I'm at the point where I'm adding weight to it and ramping it up. So Mike, I'm gonna put you on the spot. You're gonna lift this weight here. So now we're gonna continue working on ramping up those isometrics. So Mike, just lift that weight off the ground to what you can tolerate. Perfect, and then Mike is just rooting himself. If I were to try to come over or push him or move him, nothing's happening. Mike pulling himself down to the ground with that weight is really ramping up all the muscles. Do you have to find the biggest kettlebell in the gym to do this? No, absolutely not. Mike, you could just get down into that position and hold that and then just be a statue. Don't let me move you. So we gotta think, right, like the hamstrings, what they wanna do is they wanna extend the hip. So I could just try to pull Mike's hips back more and then him just holding that, Mike, you feel like everything ramping up, right? Perfect, all right, let's have you pop up. So that's just some simple tips and tricks and some insight into what I've been doing. Now the big thing, how do you get back into running? What do you do? Well, you need to do a really good warm up, and then you gotta make sure that you can actually move through your hamstring length. So Mike, you familiar with the A drill marching? Perfect. So we can just start with a little bit of the A drill march in place. We call it an A drill because if we take a look from this angle, as Mike gets that leg in front, looks like an A with the legs there. So we're moving through that hamstring length and we're digging back, we're sliding back to activate that exercise, activate that muscle, the hamstring. Now we can make it dynamic where Mike, let's actually walk through those and get moving. Perfect. So now we're making it a little bit more dynamic. We're changing the lengths. And now we can even do it where we go in and then even where we can go into a little bit of a triple extension. So now we're getting things a little bit more fired up. And what does this look like? It's just sort of skipping. So you're just trying to get that muscle working. Now we're just skipping around the gym right now. And how's it feel? Feels good. Feels good. Feel warm. Awesome. And then last but not least, should have shown it before, but maybe some dynamic mobility stuff to do before uh, your running and your A stuff is, we talked about the leg swings earlier. Let's show some inchworms. Inchworms are gonna be my favorite. So if you watch 
NBA games, man, you'll see every single basketball player doing inchworms at some point during their warm-up. All right, so I'm like 12 days out from a hamstring strain. You got a little bit of an inside peek as to what we were doing. Oh, I forgot to mention, I want to show two quick things real fast because people will sometimes be afraid of what to do. Like, okay, can I train my legs? Maybe I'm just going to focus on upper body. You can work your hamstring with upper body exercises. And Mike, you're going to be a great demo for this. So Mike, let's get set up here with the crossover symmetry. Let's do like a lat pull down, but get into a solid hip hinge position. So with this exercise, we're working the upper body, we're working the lats, but we're getting the hamstrings involved. So we're making the hamstrings work isometrically while we're getting that upper body pump. So you can get really creative with, okay, right now I'm rehabbing my hamstring. I'm going to focus more on my upper body. That doesn't mean that you don't need, uh, doesn't mean that you have to completely forget and skip out on your hamstring. The other one, let's do like a row, but be in a little bit of like an RDL position. So ideally we would have the anchor a little bit lower. It's a little high right now, but we can do it where we're going through this. As long as you can tolerate that where you're doing a row, Mike, let's even have you just hold that. Say that you were having a hard time tolerating it and you're just doing a row while maintaining that isometric. So go through that rowing motion. Awesome. And those are just two ways that you can incorporate hamstring rehab with your upper body workouts. All right, perfect. Thanks for all the demos, Mike. Yeah. All right, we hope that you enjoyed that. Comment, let us know how your hamstring rehab is going. If you have questions or concerns, let us know. More importantly, you gotta give us a thumbs up. You gotta subscribe because there's way more videos coming your way.